Well, Republican Gomorrah is about the movement that I've been covering for six years, uh, the Christian right. It's the movement that has captured the soul of the Republican Party. And I try to get beyond who the players are in the movement and what they do. I think that's well known and talk about why they do the way they do and why they're reacting the way they are. The title Republican Gomorrah is a reference to the bizarre sea of sex scandals and criminality that exploded into the open um, during the you know, Republican Congress of Tom DeLay and the White House of George W. Bush. This was an era when the Christian right had total sway over the Republican Party, but the Christian right has a, it, it's a subculture that has its own philosophy that exists apart from you know, mainstream secular society, and they have a pessimistic view of the self. They believe that when the self, when you do what you want to do, you're going to do some pretty freaky stuff because the self is inherently uh, sinful. So you need to do what God wants you to do. That's why Mark Sanford, uh, you know, ordained Baptist minister, uh, favorite of the Christian right, when he an announced his affair with his Latin lover um, in this nationally televised press conference, he said, we follow God's law because it restrains the self from itself. Mike Huckabee, another ordained Baptist minister who uh, was a dark horse in the Republican primary in 2008 said, man does not have a God nature, he has a sin nature. John Ensign, the only Pentecostal in the Senate, another darling of the Christian right, he's a senator from Nevada, um, you know, in, the, in this bizarre handwritten letter he wrote to his mistress, Cindy Hampton, who's a staffer. This letter looked like a holdup note written by a committee of Ted Kaczynski and Ted Haggard. Uh, he said, I've, the reason I had an affair with you is I walked away from God. In other words, I did what I wanted to do. And so you have a movement that's attracted all these people who think that there's something dirty inside themselves. They've been um, propelled into these high-level positions in the Republican Party. And so it's no surprise when these scandals come out because they believe and they openly admit that they have no capacity for restraining themselves without this um, strict, stern uh, guidance from a macho Jesus. And as the party tried to pander to the Christian right, to its, own, its base that Karl Rove brought into the party to re-elect George W. Bush during Bush's second term with all this anti-gay legislation and anti-abortion legislation. The scandals kept coming out. Mark Foley uh, preying on you know, young male congressional pages and Dennis Hastert, John Boehner, and Tom DeLay helped cover it up. Uh, Ted Haggard, who was on the phone every week with George W. Bush pushing for this anti-gay legislation winds up in the arms of a male bodybuilder escort with a nose full of methamphetamines. Uh, we can go on and on. Larry Craig, David Vitter. And so Karl Rove said this, this is you know, going to cost us seats in 2006 if it keeps happening. Well, the, the Republican Party is sort of you know, collapsing on its, under its own weight. It's devoid of leadership. It's devoid of ideas. And you know, you have maybe Sam Tannenhaus out there saying conservatism is dead, but I would argue conservatism is undead. It's basically a zombie that's just lurching towards Obama and toning brains, brains, because all it can do is um, attack him and mobilize resentment for more, fu for more uh, fundraising, more shock troops for the next election, and it has no agenda except to destroy Obama. And I sort of foreshadowed this in my book. I finished writing my book in January 2009, right when Obama was inaugurated. And it ends, my book ends with the image of Rob Shank and Paul Mahoney, two figures uh, who were leaders of Operation Rescue in the 90s, a group that was at least indirectly responsible for numerous assassinations of abortion doctors and countless attacks on abortion clinics. Rob Shank was a you know, at least indirectly responsible for the shooting of Barnett Slepian in, in Buffalo, the abortion provider there. And he was given special access to the U.S. Uh, Capitol through Paul Brown, a right-wing Republican legislator who has accused Barack Obama of being Stalin and Hitler at the same time and raising up a civilian army bigger than the, you know, the U.S. Army to, uh, to uh, round up right-wing dissidents. So they're given special access. They anointed the door that Obama walked through uh, but right before he delivered his inaugural address with Crisco oil and little crosses. And this image really, to me, was a consecration of the renewal of the sort of opposition we saw under Bill Clinton. Of course, they're, they're opposed to Obama, the Obama agenda, and their racial undercurrents. But what they're really against is the federal government of the United States. They have 
a revolutionary agenda to topple the government and replace it with something more along the lines of a theocracy. And I was on Morning Joe today with Joe Scarborough, and you know he was a member of the Republican Congress I talk about that came into power in 1994 and moved to impeach Bill Clinton. And you know he's a, he's a nice guy, and he's probably a, a lot less radical than many of his former colleagues, and especially many of the people that are in the Republican Congress now, which is you know uh, tacitly led by Representative Joseph Wilson. But he, he's in denial. He's unable to acknowledge the fact that the Republican Party has been completely captured by a radical movement that's moved it so far outside the American mainstream it can't hold uh, national power. And that's sort of the reaction I've been getting from the right. All they can do is deflect by attacking me and attacking the messenger. It's a Republican problem, the inability for, to, uh, to reflect. So when you have a losing team in sports, what do you do? You go and you, you start a rebuilding process, but instead the Republican Party has doubled down on all of its uh, losing players, especially Sarah Palin, and they're going to provoke a huge conflict within their ranks. And as I demonstrate in my book, it's a movement filled with people who are in conflict with themselves, so naturally they project their conflict into the political sphere and they've thrown this party into this internal struggle.